Hello, I'm Brian Nunn. I'm a retired police officer and a current law enforcement consultant for the Kentucky League of Cities. Due to the current opioid epidemic, our country and our Commonwealth has seen a dramatic increase in law enforcement exposures to substances such as fentanyl and carfentanyl. Additionally, Kentucky continues to have officers exposed to needle sticks on a near weekly basis. The purpose of this video is to bring increased awareness to these issues and to provide our law enforcement officers with tools and techniques to prevent future exposures. I was responding to a call of shoplifting at Best Buy. When I had got there, the suspects had left and the store employee had grabbed the purse and the merchandise from the suspects, there's two of them. There's a ton of needles in the purse, all of her belongings were in the purse and so we just started kind of going through everything to see if we could identify who that pur purse belonged to, um, anything like that. There was a stack of papers in the purse and so um, they were kind of fill out papers so I knew there was like names and stuff in there so I you know held them in front of my face and started flipping through each one looking for a name so we could get an idea of who this was and um, so I flipped and flipped and flipped and that is ultimately what led to me being exposed and it was airborne. When I started feeling that I wasn't right I still had the papers in my hand so it was about a minute or so um, and at first I just kind of felt like my blood pressure had dropped so you know at that point I'm, I'm like oh I don't feel so good but I didn't I, I said that I thought my blood pressure was dropping but you know you continue looking on and um, so it, it was quick but you don't it doesn't register right at first I was on FTO phase at that point my FTO looked at me and said you don't look good and so that's when he called EC and um, my vision started going out um, I kind of just felt like I was in a daze looking around. I almost passed out when I was outside and while waiting for EC. And when I got in the buggy, you know, they started checking vitals and my blood pressure was off the wall. My heart rate was off the wall. Um, it just was an uncomfortable feeling. Yes, EC arrived um, on scene and, and they said, you know, this is probably an exposure. And so they started um, monitoring us for, for vitals and at that time, my beat partner came out and was experiencing symptoms as well and so was my FTO. The key thing that I took out of it is that you know as police officers especially on patrol we're looking for a baggie or you know a rolled up dollar bill or something where they store the the drugs especially heroin um, so that's what you're looking for and you don't especially with females you don't realize that we toss everything into the bag and so that is leading to everything in the bag getting exposed to the drugs. So that's what ultimately led to me being exposed because no, she did not have a pouch of heroin in her purse, but it had gotten in, on the stuff in the purse. And that's one thing to be aware of is that it's not gonna be immediate to, you know, you're know, you not gonna sit and stare at it and know that there's a drug there. It, it could be on their clothes, it could be in their purse, on their papers. And you know, it's the last thing that you expect. Toward the end of 2014 is when we really started seeing an uptick in, in fentanyl submissions to the, to the KSP lab, and we started seeing an increase in our overdose deaths in fentanyl. Um, in 2015, uh, that, that increased even more, and in 2016, nearly half of all overdose deaths in Kentucky had fentanyl in the bloodstream, whether it was fentanyl, carfentanyl, or some other analog. There's kind of a false sense of security sometimes uh, when people are buying pills, buying methamphetamine, buying cocaine but all these things have been found to have fentanyl in them. Some of the cartels are taking fentanyl as an active ingredient but making it look like a Xanax bar, or having fentanyl as the active ingredient but having it look like a Percocet. Um, so that's, not only is that dangerous for the public that's consuming them, it's dangerous for the officers that are hand counting out pills like they have for years. Uh, now all of a sudden, this becomes a gloved issue, this becomes an airborne issue, um, so we really gotta be cautious about everything we're handling now. We've even seen fentanyl and marijuana, uh, marijuana that's been laced with fentanyl. So it really is a game changer, this, this introduction of, of fentanyl into our illicit drug supply um, is, is dangerous for everyone involved. From the patrol officer to the property room, everybody needs to be careful in how they're handling drugs. Uh, we received a call of a possible overdose, a male unresponsive in the back of a vehicle. When we arrived, there was one male in the backseat of a Jeep Grand Cherokee who was unresponsive. Uh, he was turning blue, wasn't breathing, uh, his pupils were fixed, uh, he was soaking wet. The individual who had called it in had tried to wake him up and thrown, a, I guess, a cup of water on him. 
I slid him forward and I slid my arms underneath his arms and, and drug him out the side of the car, uh, laid him down on his back on the pavement, uh, tilted his head up, brought his chin forward so he would uh, open his airway. So he got him breathing. Uh, I started, I left the scene, I was driving. Uh, I started to feel somewhat lightheaded, a little bit dizzy. Um, started to feel like my temperature had increased and I had my air conditioning as high as it would go with the windows up, blowing right on my face and I was still burning up. I thought, I thought about, you know, was I exposed to something, but I figured it was just in my head, so I just, I kept driving. And I drove on down the road and I ended up calling the deputy who was still at the scene to, because this subject had originally denied taking anything and called to find out if he had admitted to what he actually taken. Uh, he admitted he had taken heroin. Uh, I told the deputy the symptoms that I was having. He relayed that to the EMS that were on scene, and they advised me to come back there, and they would hit me with some Narcan. Uh, at that point, I traveled far enough that I was closer to another med station, so I went to that location. I was decontaminated there. The med station is actually part of a firehouse. I was uh, decontaminated at the scene and had to uh, put on a Tyvek suit and they put me in the ambulance and administered Narcan. It could have been respiratory, it could have been airborne. We, uh, once he was out of the vehicle, some powder substance was observed on his clothing, but it, there's nothing definitive to say it was respiratory or contact. Like I said, he was, his buddy threw water all over him, so it could have been anywhere on him and come in contact with my skin and soaked in, or I, it could have been when I pulled him out, it could have breathed it in, so. Right, I, I started to question it, I started to think, you know, was I exposed to something? But, you know, cops, we don't want to show weakness. Uh, it was a situation where I kind of talked myself out of investigating it further. Uh, but the more that I went, the more the symptoms became something that I couldn't ignore. And I, that's when I made the decision to make the call. So. I think the nature of uh, law enforcement in general is if someone is exposed themselves, uh, they may not either uh, acknowledge uh, that they, uh, you know, having symptoms. It could be something as simple as a headache, increased uh, blood pressure, as we've seen from some of the other interviews, uh, uh, a lot of uh, just feeling extremely hot, for example. And a lot of times those symptoms, I think, can be dismissed by the individual, but for fellow officers to be very mindful of their uh, partners and their other officers that they're working around to be looking out for them and kind of watching their back for potential exposure symptoms. A couple of the most basic uh, things that officers can do uh, are, are certainly wear uh, nitrile gloves uh, is recommended when, when handling anything that is, is even uh, possibly associated with fentanyl. Another one is if um, they have available to them some type of uh, mask, uh, a particulate mask uh, specifically, uh, and if uh, there's certainly different types of these, but even the most simple mask is, is better than nothing at all. Uh, if there's uh, gross contamination of fentanyl, of course, it's a good idea to, to completely recognize that and then back out of the scene. You know, we've heard it suggested anything that would safely contain that needle, uh, some, something such as uh, an empty uh, Tide, you know, bottle, for example. Just label it sharps, and if you have a, a, a needle, rather than trying to recap that needle, uh, potentially putting it in, the, in, the, in that container. Uh, anything w uh, will work. Uh, but another thing is to try to avoid handling uh, that particular needle uh, with your hands, even an inexpensive pair of pliers to throw in your patrol vehicle, for example, and use some type of mechanical device uh, to touch the needle and dispose of it then in the sharp container. Uh, or we recommend that you absolutely do not recap the needles. We see a lot of needle sticks uh, that come from officers being aware of the hazards and inadvertently getting stuck. Even sometimes the needle will penetrate the cap itself uh, and you get the stick from that. So we recommend that there, you do not recap the needles. Narcan, uh, we recommend every first responder to have that available to them and we, we certainly hope that departments will make that available to their officers and first responders. But once again, it goes back to being look, looking for those signs, uh, symptoms of potential exposure and having Narcan available to them to administer it uh, as needed. Don't put your hands someplace you can't see. The two areas where we have the most exposures to officers from needle sticks is one, putting your hands someplace where you can't see, under a car seat, into a suspect's pocket, and they come across a needle. 
So don't put your hands in there if you can't see where they're going. And the other is trying to recap a needle. Never recap a needle. Unfortunately, even in Kentucky, actually this month and in other areas around the country, we're finding EMS workers as well as officers exposed to narcotics, and it's usually a respiratory exposure. For the beat officer, they need to be wearing nitrile gloves. For the tactical officer who may be doing a warrant in a lab, um, if you are if you suspect that you are entering a lab, the use of a flashbang, which would make particulate airborne, would put the officer at particular risk. So in a tactical situation into a lab, the officers need to be wearing a gas mask with a filter that will filter the, either the carfentanil or the fentanyl particle and keep it from getting into their lungs. The lungs are the easiest way for an officer to get exposed. Now, skin is one way, but if you look at the surface area of the lungs, it's tremendous. And so even breathing in a small amount of carfentanil or fentanyl puts the officer at risk. LMPD also provides Narcan not only for our officers, but also to our canine unit. So that if a canine, in the course of a search, uh, breathes in some narcotic, and the, officer, or the dog then becomes symptomatic, we can inject the same Narcan that we give to a human into the nostrils of a dog. And that will protect the dog from going into respiratory and then cardiac arrest post-exposure to the narcotic. They're gonna to need to watch themselves <clears throat> and watch their partner. If they go into a contaminated environment, there may also need to be decont. So you wanna make sure that your local fire department, EMS, has the ability to decon and treat an exposed officer. We concentrate on needles, needle sticks, uh, even in even in this this scenario. You know, we were looking over him for needles before I pulled him out of the car. I was looking for needles. You don't want to get stuck. That's you know, that's kind of ingrained in the back of our minds, but you don't think about atmospheric problems. You know, things that could be breathed in or uh, you know, you could come into contact with on your skin, and that's something that's got to be. The, the game has changed for us, so we've got to be aware of that. I just would urge people that when you're not feeling good is to go ahead and speak up because, you know, we don't, we don't want to say, oh, we're not feeling good. You know, we just want to, our pride tells us, you know, we'll be fine, just stick it out. Um, but, you know, the sooner that you speak up and get that kind of care, the, the better.